Hello everyone, I'm Shubh and you're watching F1 Error Analysis. For those of you who are new to my channel, a quick background check. I work with the Red Bull Racing team for the 2021 and the 2022 season as a student placement error analyst. And this has given me some insights into the world of F1 aerodynamics. And my objective with this error analysis series is to give you those insights. So let's dive into it then. Yes, the W14 is not as competitive as we would have all liked it to be as fans of the sport. Uh, we want a good fight at the front of the grid and we want to see Red Bull being challenged. However, there are still some innovations on the W14 that other teams have already started copying. And one of them is the downwashing suspension fairing. And in this video, what we're going to try and look at is what does it do and what do people mean when they say the suspension is used to downwash the upwash coming from the front wing. Let's dive into it then. So how a wing produces downforce is a separate video by itself. But one of the consequences of producing downforce is that as the air follows the profiles of the front wing, the momentum or the direction of the momentum of air changes and it gets an upward component. So the angle at which the flow exits the trailing edge of the last element is what we call as the upwash angle. So, you know, as the air is getting turned around the profiles, the air is being pushed up and that is what we call upwash. So the upwash is directly proportional to the wing loading. That is the more loaded a particular Y section is. As you can see in this case, the more load there is across a certain Y section, the more upwash will be present because there is more turning in the flow happening in very simplistic terms. So the upwash is directly proportional to the wing loading. This is a CFD picture I got from one of my colleagues. His YouTube channel is Tom Talks. Very interesting and talented aerodynamicist himself. Do check him out. So um, what you can see in this picture quite easily is that as the airflow goes underneath the main elements and the other elements of the front wing, the airflow gets turned up. And that is in a very simple way, what we call upwash. And what you can already see from this picture is that the suspension arms are going to play some sort of a role in trying to manage this upwash. So let us try and understand what the role of the suspension arms are and what it does to this upwash that it sees from the front wing. To do that, let us look at a cross section in the Y plane so that we see what happens at a slightly more detailed level. So if we come down, so if you look at this drawing, you can notice how the upwash is managed by the suspension arms. So this is the front wing. These are the suspension arms. Uh, this is the floor. And what we are trying to understand is what is the role of the suspension fairings? And the best way to put it is that it is a bridge between the flow coming from the front wing to the flow that the floor sees and the side pod sees, right? So first and foremost, the primary job of your suspension fairings is to ensure that there is minimalistic to no separation on the fairings themselves. Now, what do I mean by this? Because the flow is coming at a high upwash angle, the angle of attack that the suspension fairings see locally is quite high. So if you try to downwash the air, that is if you try to turn the air a bit too aggressively, what you will eventually land up doing is causing flow separation on the suspension arms themselves. So here is where your front wing loading philosophy and hence your front wing upwash distribution or your spanwise upwash distribution has to be able to communicate with your suspension arms in such a way that at least there is minimalistic to no separation as the flow goes over the suspension arms because if there is then you're going to feed poor energy air to the rear and the mid part of the car. Secondly, and this is where aerodynamic design and it gets a bit complicated. If you are able to make your front wing talk with your suspension arms fairly well, then you will have the ability to downwash the flow without separating the flow on the suspension arms. And what is the use of this? Now, a lot of people think that this lands up giving you more air into the floor itself. And that is true. But aerodynamically, what is happening is quite subtle. What do I mean by this? 
imagine you have three different flow vectors one which is up washing one which is straight and one which is down washing now ask yourself the question which of these vectors would give you the highest angle of attack on the flow leading edge well the answer is the down washing vector so what is happening when you down wash the flow using the suspension arms you land up increasing the angle of attack on the flow leading edge which will result in a larger suction on the flow leading edge and thus a larger static pressure drop on the flow leading edge which itself has different benefits such as of course it's going to lead to increase in downforce but it will also lead to increase in the vortex strength and it will drive what is the vortex strength that is coming off the strikes of the front floor now here's what you need to be really careful about that flow leading edge is quite susceptible to separation and if you have a flow leading edge separation god bless your floor uh, and what happens downstream so to avoid that teams very carefully manage their angle of attacks and the height of the flow leading edge and this is why you can see different teams having different flow leading edge heights and how they are sculpted so it is very carefully designed as the suspension arms are talking with the flow leading edge too because that's the flow that the flow leading edge sees now there is another potential aero mechanism at play here and to talk about that i want to bring up this image from a project that me and wanja are working upon wanja hasnovic from f1 technical absolute legend on the forum and what i want to talk about is the effect of the undercut that is present on the side pods so you can see the upwash and you can see the flow turning there's not much turning on this flow because the front wing and the suspension that we have in the simulation is not catered to any specific team it's just a generic as you can see there are only three elements in the front wing but what is really interesting is this undercut that's present which results in pressurization as you can see this is a ct slice and what you see is that the pressurization itself causes a lot of flow turning right and this flow turning what this results in is feeding air into the floor itself and you can see that what this would do is again create a down washing component onto the air flow that is coming from the front wing and that would again result in increasing the local angle of attack onto the flow leading edge resulting in higher static pressure drops and making your floor at least the front floor work harder so as you can see everybody is communicating with each other here so now to the main question of the video now what is this upgrade that mercedes have brought and who is trying to copy it so what you can see here is this fairing that is basically a connection between the nose and the inboard part of the suspension and what you can see here is that they are down washing the air that is not just coming from the suspensions but also down washing the air that is flowing over the nose right so that air also comes in and feeds most probably into the inboard channel the inboard most channel onto the floor which is the most powerful channel and houses the primary vortex that goes along the length of the floor and this was copied by alfa romeo as this was not present for them in testing but they came up with this nice neat little patch as you see here which became like a fairing um for the suspension and again they're using this for the same purpose in which they're trying to down wash the air coming not just from the suspension arms but also from the nose itself and these images are from nicholas f1 i uh from twitter so thank you nicholas for these images so the big takeaway from this video is that all the components on a formula 1 car communicate with each other when it comes to the front part of the car what you can see is the suspension fairing acts as a bridge between the air that comes from the front wing all the upwash that is coming from the front wing the suspension fairing tries to downwash that that is turn the flow down towards the flow leading edge so that it increases the angle of attack on the flow leading edge and entrains more air into the flow physically which results in a larger static pressure drop and a catalyst to this mechanism itself is the undercut present on the 2022 car's side pods which in itself because of the high pressurization that it creates results in down washing the air into the floor and further increases the angle of attack on the flow leading edge resulting in larger static pressure drops giving you more downforce and driving the vortex from the strikes that are present on the front floor so that's my take on it and i hope i've given you a good insight well i hope you enjoyed this video cuz in this video i took some of your comments wherein you guys said that you guys wanted a little bit of basic explanation 
So I use some of the basics and build upon them some of the aerodynamic concepts that we use in F1. And I hope you enjoyed it in general and it added towards your knowledge of learning F1 aerodynamics. So if you like this video, give me a like and you enjoy content like this, give me a subscribe. I hope to see you guys for some of the more content that I'm going to do for the Jeddah race.